Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Adenike Ali and I welcome you back to my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome, welcome and welcome again. Thank you very much for tuning in today. Greatly, greatly appreciate you and I hope you just like the content here. Click on the subscribe button, it's free and hit all notifications so that when I upload a new video, will be the first one to know. Thank you so very much. And to my old family members, my Ali fam, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back again, guys. Thank you so very much as always for your love as well as for your support. On this channel, we talk about faith, family, and lifestyle. So welcome once again. And thank you for being here today. Today's video is about a sermon that I heard at a recent wedding that I attended. Actually, the pastor that ministered is one of my pastors, but the message just resonates with me and I just feel it's almost spring. We're gonna be going to wedding season. Message is there for married couples as well. So for engaged couples getting married, newly married, and those that have been in the married journey for a bit, it's there's something there for everyone um, some of the points that he made are you have to make your marriage a testimony and guideline to others put god first your spouse last no put god first your spouse second and yourself last know god better on a daily basis these are just some of the few pointers let him be the centerpiece of your lives and if he's already been let him continue to be the centerpiece of your lives as well as of your home if he's the centerpiece of your lives and your home everything every piece of the puzzle falls into place because you're both you know walking towards the same goal um and with god on your side everything just makes it easier be committed to constant learning Hmm. nobody knows it all because this is an institution right that you do not graduate from you go to polytechnic you graduate you go to uni you graduate you graduate from all those but this institution there's no graduation date there's matriculation but no graduation it's it's he said it's also an institution where on the start of the journey as you're embarking on that journey is when you get your certificate hmm because other institutions right upon completion of your your courses that's when you get your your certificate but this one they give it to you from the onset he also mentioned that growth is intentional well, you have to be intentional about it be ready to learn be ready to be corrected that's a key point. Be ready to be corrected. If you're doing something wrong, don't say, oh, it's my habit. It's a habit. I've been doing it for a long time. So I don't, I don't want to be, I don't think I should be corrected. No, nobody knows it all. So be willing to learn and be willing to be corrected. Pastor Ajibari mentioned that divorce is not an option. But me, a minte mio, I say divorce is an option. Physical abuse, emotional abuse, financial abuse if there's um sexual abuse if there's mental abuse if there's any beg run me i say yes run he i mean yeah he's a pastor he might he he's right saying that but me instead of you being carried away from that marriage in a body bag leave with your bags i'll say that one more time instead of you being carried out of an abusive marriage in a body bag leave alive with your bags I've said it before and I'll keep saying it. Abuse of any type is not to be condoned. Add my own two cents. I, say my, uh, I think he mentioned it also. 
marriage is supposed to make you better not bitter emphasis is on not marriage is supposed to make you better not bitter because once you start having medical issues high blood pressure diabetes you know then set, the stroke sets in and all that all that forms of diseases and ailments crawl into into the body is is it really worth it once you start having sleepless nights and you're unhappy is it really worth it so watch the video of the sermon and know in the comment section what you think i know it ministered to me and i'm sure all the engaged couples the um about to get married the newlyweds and those of us that have been in the in the marriage highway for a while too there's a point or two that we can learn from it as we're going to your word briefly lord speak to our hearts in the name of jesus christ listening ears obedient hearts the grace to put it to practice to each and every one of us in the name of jesus christ uh, first of all i want to give honor to god for this opportunity briefly i want to bring towards the word of god and i've titled it principles for a godly marriage god is the one that instituted marriage in the first place so because he instituted marriage there was some purpose god has some purposes and some plans for his institute for him instituting marriage in the first place not only that there's a way that he wants it to be run so that the blessings that he wants to come out of it can come out of it. Initially, as we've heard, God created marriage for believers, two believers that had not fell because marriage was instituted before man fell. And because of that, marriage is, was created for believers, matured believers in Christ, not, be, not babes. Why? Because God had a purpose in mind why he created this institution. And today, I just want to bring to you some principles, that is, guidelines for a godly marriage. Because not every marriage is godly. But for your own marriage, because you are children of God, what does God expect? So I'm just going to bring you some, not all. I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Firstly, I want to say that you should, both of you should always put God first. Then your spouse next. And yourself last hmm. if you want to enjoy your marriage put god first mm -hmm. your spouse next and yourself last hmm. if you want to enjoy your marriage if you do this you'll be amazed at the ease and satisfaction that your relationship will bring to you mm -hmm. because when god created marriage he created it so that both of you can enjoy it but for you to enjoy and get the blessing that god has put in it he must be first. He mm -hmm. must be number one. Mm -hmm. And your goal as individuals should be to know God better, to love mm -hmm. God better. Because when you gravitate towards God, automatically you gravitate towards each other. Mm -hmm. So let God be the centerpiece. When you, when you know God, when you have it in mind as individuals to know God better, there's no way in which you, you, both of you will not know each other better and mm -hmm. both of you will not love each other better. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. This is what it says in the passage. It says, trust in the Lord completely. Do not rely on your own opinions. With all your heart, rely on him to guide you. And he will lead you in every decision you make. Mm. Be intimate with him in whatever you do. And he will lead you wherever you go. Show you the path to take. Verse 7. It says, don't think for a moment that you know it all. For wisdom comes when you adore him with undivided devotion and avoid everything that's wrong. You have to understand that when you put God first, there is no way in which you will come last. Because when you put God first, God will fight for you. Even if your husband wants to cheat you, your wife wants to cheat you, God will come to your defense because you have honored him. If you look at the story of Sarah in the Bible, when she and her husband, Abraham, went on journeys and Abraham told her to tell that you are my sister. Because of her submission to Abraham, God did not allow anything to happen to Sarah. Which means that when you put God first, God will take care of whatever, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. even, even, even if it's to your own disadvantage, mm -hmm. God will take care of it. You know, a man of God, Chastain says something, say, obey God 
and leave the consequences to him. Mm. So when you obey God, everything else, God will take care of it. Mm. And God will take care of it for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. So Philippians 2, 3 to 4 says, when you do things, do not let selfishness or pride be your guide. Instead, be humble and give more honor to others than to yourselves. Do not be interested only in your own life, but be interested in the lives of others. The pastor translation says, verse 4, abandon every display of selfishness. Possess a greater concern for what matters to others instead of your own interest. So when you place your spouse ahead of you and you seek for your spouse what makes your spouse to be to be happy, to be glad, definitely your spouse will be happy and your home will be happy. And I pray that this will be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Number two, be committed to constant learning. Be committed to constant learning. You are in an institution whereby you cannot graduate from. You can only get better. Nobody graduates from it. And also, this is the only institution that when you start, they give you the certificate. Every other thing, every other <laughs> course you take is at the end. And you are awarded the certificate. But at the beginning, you are given the certificate. So it's a constant learning process. I believe you don't need to write, but you need to continue to get better as a husband. You continue to get better as a wife. And, and I said before, growth is intentional. You have to be willing to grow as a husband, as we're willing to grow as a wife. Because the minute you stop growing, mm. you stop putting the effort to grow, then your marriage starts to die. Mm. So you must be willing to put in the work. Because marriage is work. It does not, mm -hmm. It's not easy. But God is there to help you in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. As you both make strides to be better in your careers, work, make also strides to know God better and to be better for yourselves. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 18, in the Amplified Bible says, but grow spiritually mature in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory, honor, majesty, both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Number three, I want you to have it at the back of your mind that divorce is not an option. You have to believe it in your heart that we are in this thing to make it work. If you don't have that belief that you're going to make it work, it's not going to work. Mm. So you have to fight for your marriage. Mm. The fight starts from today, from mm -hmm. day one. Because you will never give your best to someone or something that you do not think is right for you. Mm. There's going to be problems. And this calls for unconditional acceptance. That is, you must appreciate everything about your spouse, their talents, their gifts, their differences, their peculiarities, their proficiencies, their interests, and even their weaknesses. Because mm. it is what you want to see. That's what you're going to see. Mm. You want to see how bad he is. That's what you're going to see. Mm -hmm. So, but it is what you focus on. So, focus on his strengths. Focus on our strengths. And God will help you in the name of Jesus Christ. Ayo, you are responsible for this marriage. I want to call that extreme ownership. Because if this marriage is, fails, God is going to ask you as a man. Because in Genesis chapter 3, verse 9, when man fell, it, if ate the fruit, but the God asked if, God asked the man. He said, where are you? What did you do? What happened? So, if this marriage fails, God is going to ask you. God is not going to ask her. Even if she's going to cost it, God is going to ask you. God has given you a wife. She's a raw material. You must, make, you must know what God wants to make out of her and mold her into that because she's raw material. God did not give you a finished product. I pray that God will help you in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And you, Kenis, you are responsible for the atmosphere in the home. Take charge and create an atmosphere of peace and not of strife. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 1 says, A wise woman builds her home, mm. but a foolish woman tears it down mm. with her own hands. So, how your home is, how the atmosphere goes in your home, that's on you. And I pray that it will be an atmosphere of peace that your husband wants to come home at all times in the name of Jesus Christ. Also, I want you to understand something that there will always be conflicts in marriage. It's a given. Mm. It's not the course. Because both of you, you're not perfect individuals. You're not perfect individuals. Yeah. There will always be conflict in marriage. But you must understand conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. You must understand conflict resolution. It's effective management of differences. Because both of you are different. Coming from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different cultures. They're coming together. So there are going to be differences. There are going to be friction. But you must know how to effectively manage those conflicts. And when you manage them well, they will bring understanding. Mm. But if you don't manage them well, they will bring misunderstanding. Because these conflicts are supposed to 
used, supposed to be used to bring you closer to each other. Because you're, you're going, as I said before, you're going on a journey. You're going to learn more about each other. What you have known before, you'll be surprised that there are going to be surprises. Wow, I, I didn't know you were like this. I didn't know you were like that. It's going to happen. But you must be ready to know that, you know what, okay, we are in this together to make it work. Mm. I pray that God will help you in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about conflict resolution, you must make sure that you do not compare your spouse to somebody else. Mm. Because when you start to compare your spouse to somebody else, you know what, why, why are you not like th that person? You're starting to dig your hole for your, for, for your marriage. So God gave you your own spouse who is unique to you. So you must embrace your differences. And conflicts is in three levels. The issue, the person, and the relationship. But most, most couples, instead of addressing the issue, they attack the person. And when you attack the person, the relationship suffers. So when any conflict arises, find out what is the issue. And don't attack the person. Another point, sow the right kind of seeds into each other's lives. Mm. Sow the right kind of seeds into each other. Whatever you do is a seed. So sow the right kind of seed. Bible tells on Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, that seed time and harvest shall never cease. Mm. Seed time. Which means that there's a time to sow seeds. Mm -hmm. But the Bible did not say harvest time. Which means that the harvest can be unending. So sow the right seeds. Because it is the seeds you sow today that will bring the results that you want tomorrow, mm -hmm. either good or bad. But I pray that you will sow good seeds in the name of Jesus Christ. The question that you should ask is that, how can I make my spouse better? What can I do to improve his or her life? How can I be a blessing to my spouse? First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24 says, Let no one seek his own good, but each other's well-being. And I pray that as you do this, the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Two more points. Your life as a couple should be a blessing and a force to be reckoned with, much more than when you are both single. Why is this so? The Bible tells us in that the Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 30, that one will chase a thousand, and ten will put ten thousand to flight. Which means that when you come together as a couple, the force that your union generates is so powerful that heaven recognizes it. And use that to your advantage. Use that to whatever you want to do. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, that if two of you shall agree on any matter, as long as it's the will of God, it will be done. So use your agreement to move mountains. I said before, marriage is supposed to make you better, not better. So your coming together must be better than when you are single. If your life is not better, then something's wrong somewhere. And the issue will never be with God. So the issue is always with man. Lastly, focus on each other's strengths. Mm. Whatever you focus on is what you manifest in your marriage. You are both brought together to complement each other. Where Ayo is weak, can you're going to be strong in that area, and vice versa. Knowing that, at the end, we're going to give an account mm. of our journey. Mm -hmm. And people are going to watch you. And you want them to use you as a point of contact, as, an, as a good well, thank example. Thank you so very much for watching. I leave you with love, peace, and joy always. If you've not subscribed to this channel, please find it in your heart to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much, and have a great day. Bye-bye.